Welcome back to Retro Wednesday at the Tide Area of Hangar. This is Mike, and today I'm going to talk to you about 1980s toy lines, the small ones that can keep up, that can hang in with these large powerhouse toy lines. Everyone knows about the Star Wars, the Transformers, the He-Mans, the G.I. Joes, the Mask. Today, I've got a list of small toy lines that pack up big punch. We're going to talk about them coming up. First on the list, we're going to talk about Cops and Crooks. This is a quirky TV show to accompany a toy line. It has a pretty serious comic book, too. There are 29 figures in this toy line, four or five of which were packed into vehicles. Kind of G.I. Joe style, but pretty much everything Hasbro did with this was G.I. Joe style from all of the little accessories to the way the figures were built with the rubber bands on the inside to packing the figures with the vehicles. Cops had some of the coolest looking vehicles, very strange designs, but futuristic and at the same time classic. The figures themselves also had a futuristic yet classic vibe to them and a lot of the bad guys seem to be based off of mobsters and old-timey classic type of characters. Next on my list is Silverhawks. Silverhawks had a TV show. It was a really cool toy line from back in the 80s. The toy line had a small number of figures, a couple of vehicles, and some some large birds to go with it. And most of these had small birds accompanying the figures. The figures themselves though looked amazing. The use of vac metalized plating as the paint job on these figures make them look outstanding but the downside to that is they scratch and wear very easily which ends up making them look terrible once they're worn. Finding pristine examples is a challenge with the Silverhawks. Some of the most interesting looking vehicles ever designed still are not very functional but they are cool. Rambo Force of Freedom is another small toy line that packs a really big punch. But it's kind of not fair because it's based on a cartoon, but I think the toys sold mostly because of the movies. There's a total of 18 different figures that were released. They're not all pictured here, but six of which were in the series two. So 12 in series one, six in series two, and of series two, some of those are extremely hard to get. Some of them are still challenging to get but anyway it's still a pretty small toy line with a total of 18 figures four vehicles and a playset now this playset looks like it could have fit in any of the movies well at least any of the first four movies and it would have made sense even the the movie the number four in burma they had similar type setups and the playset itself is pretty cool and it is massive just way bigger in person than i thought it would be I've already done a video talking about Series 1 and some of those vehicles. I'll be doing another video talking about Series 2 down the road and then eventually a whole episode on the playset. Fun toy line, Rambo Force of Freedom. Not sure if I'm going to go after some of the overseas variants which that gets into a, an expensive sticky situation. Hasbro's Visionaries is another really fun toy line and it only has a small amount of figures and vehicles making up the toy line. There were only one series of figures released with a total of eight carded figures and four box vehicles. Of course, classic Hasbro style, there's a figure packed with the vehicle and that's the only way you can get that figure. Putting a total of 12 figures and four vehicles, no playset, although they did have a really cool playset planned with a with a holographic feature, but the cool thing about these figures was the holograms on the chests and the staff. And I've already done a Retro Wednesday video about the entire toy line if you want to check that out. This is a really fun toy line. Kind of built like G.I. Joe's, but a little bit bigger. Next on the list is Mattel's Brave Star. Now this toy line is really small. 
So this toy line only had a total of nine figures, and you could count one figure as a vehicle. It crosses over, and two of the figures were packed with vehicles, so it really does kind of cloud the whole situation. But still, there's not very much to this toy line. It also came with this Strato coach, which it really seems like they should have sold the little horse separate because in the show, the little silver horse was ridden by all these different characters, but yet it only comes with the expensive Strato coach. They also had a really cool playset, which was massive. And the way they sold it, they sold it in multiples. You could get the full playset, you could get just the command center, and then you could get it separately, a separate set that had the gel in the bank. But it kind of seems like it'd be a lot of fun to get several of these and line them up and have an old western style town. This futuristic western style toy line is a lot of fun and I was surprised how high of quality the figures were. I always thought they were a little bit lower quality and it turns out they hold up well over time. Next on the list we have Sectars and Sectars was a very short run show that had some beautiful looking figures behind it. There were only nine figures total some of which came with large flying bugs as their accessory. Others came with the smaller bugs as their accessory. They all had guns and shields and stuff like that. But the true massive part of this toy line was the playset. The Hive playset is one of the taller playsets from the 80s. And it has a lot of play features. But it is extremely delicate. And... Finding one intact that isn't all destroyed is a challenge this day and age. This toy line is forgotten and overlooked, but still a whole lot of fun. These days they're releasing three and three quarter inches from a company called Zika Toys. And these figures do look good, but something about the larger vintage versions that make those stand out in a much more appealing to have the bigger versions of the figures. These small Zika figures do look good and carry on that classic feel. Next on the list we have Marvel Super Heroes Secret Wars. This toy line consisted of 14 figures, 8 vehicles, and a playset. Lots of fond memories playing with this really small toy line, but also matched some of the other toy lines of the time in both size and aesthetic so it blended in really well with a bunch of other toy lines even though it was its own. I remember having this playset and it probably was the smallest and cheapest playset that I ever owned but I had so much fun playing with it even though it only has two or three little gimmicks that go along with it. It was a great fun cheap playset at the time. Next on the list we have the Supernaturals toy line. This is a toy line that I don't remember a show, a cartoon, or any sort of media driving it because there was no show, no cartoon driving this. The toys existed because of the hologram gimmick. And for whatever reason, people lump these in with visionaries, even though the holograms on these are completely different than how visionaries used holograms. These holograms were the actual figures, their faces, their, their chests. And you could also put armor over the holograms and then you take the armor off to see the holograms. Still an interesting toy line and it's very small toy line at that. With only 14 figures, two vehicles, a playset, and two beasts. It's still a pretty small toy line. Getting your hands on lion wings or the dark dragon beasts might be a challenge as they were released in very few numbers and very hard to find. It's still a very fun toy line to collect for, but it feels like you're buying the same figure over and over in different colors. I don't know, maybe that's just me. Next on the list, we have Captain Power and the Soldiers of the Future. 
This toy line consisted of 10 figures and a plethora of play sets and vehicles to accompany those figures. There's more vehicles and more play sets than they actually have figures. This toy line uses the laser tag type gimmick interactive connection with the actual show itself. It was a fun gimmick for back in the day. Although it's a really small toy line figure wise, getting every one of the strange vehicles and the different types of play sets will be a challenge. And last on the list, I have Bionic 6. Based on a fun, energetic show from the 80s, Bionic 6 is actually a pretty small toy line. Consisting of 13 figures, if you count Fluffy as just a figure, and a playset, The Secret Headquarters, which is really hard to find these days for some reason. And there are five vehicles that are included in this toy line. This Bionic 6 toy line is a small, fun toy line to collect. As with many of these toy lines, it gets harder and harder to track them down every year that goes by. Let me know what you think about this list of small 80s toy lines. What other small 80s toy lines are out there that you would have liked to have seen? Like and subscribe. Tadira Vanger out.